the heresy of heresies was common sense. <laughs> it was a powerful line, right? It, it was. It's not that. It's not just that they're defining out of uh, existence your experience and ability to discern reality, but the very existence that there is an objective external reality out there was tacitly denied by their philosophy. So two and two can become five. Humans can become non-humans or non-persons. Boys can become girls and girls can become boys and there can be 130 genders and the heartbeat is now electrical impulse flickerings, electrically induced flickerings, not heartbeats. Uh, the heresy of heresies is common sense, uh, right? Because the left has always believed that through language, they can manipulate reality, right? Because the left does not believe in a fixed human nature. We believe that human nature is fixed, right? That's why we like to be students of history, because uh, we suck, we've always sucked, and we're always going to suck. And that's why you need Jesus, <laughs> that, that we tend towards despotism, Right, that man is not fundamentally good. He's fundamentally flawed and bad. And so we need what C.S. Lewis calls chests so that our intellect rules our appetite through, through morality. Well, by whose standard can we discern morality? By God's standard, right? If there's not a creator, if there's not a big banger, if there's not someone who created the world, however he did it, then, then by what standard can you appeal to that's above and outside of yourself such that we should all be beholden to that standard, right? If it's just a Darwinian dog-eat-dog world, there's a survival of the fittest, might makes right, then then I should be able to impose my truth and understanding of reality on you and you can't complain about it or say boo about it. Oops, if you're an unborn child, you're dead. It's just a warring of interests versus an adherence to an objective, you know, moral standard, the acknowledgement of a moral universe and that we have certain certain duties and obligations that flow from our human nature as rational human beings with language who can make sense of our own liberty. But it is that language piece that separates us from all of the other beasts, right? And our rational nature, which goes hand in hand with language, the ability to express yourself, right? This is why you don't hold a tiger legally responsible in a court of law for mauling a man, for killing a man. But you do hold a man responsible for killing another man because he knew better and he had language and faculties of reasoning by which to make sense of right and wrong. That's what separates us from the beast. But language is key, right? If you, can, if you can redefine words, the left believes they can redefine reality. Now, reality is fixed. You can't redefine it, but you can sure suppress it, right? You can make that reality something less than self-evident, not so self-evident anymore, not so axiomatic, because ideology is a hell of a drug, isn't it? Ideology is a hell of a drug. That's why that I, when I talk to pro-aborts and I engage with these people, it, it has become abundantly clear to me that many pro-aborts actually believe that one, pro-lifers only want to end abortion to control women because they want to keep women under the thumb of the patriarchy and they don't want them to have full equality before the law or full equality in the workplace. Like they don't want women to be able to have as many opportunities because to quote Helen Gurley Brown, the editor-in-chief of the Cosmopolitan decades ago, women have these, these very frustrating built-in mechanisms which allow them to have babies, uteruses. And it was because of these built-in mechanisms, very dehumanizing of women, by the way, that allow them to have babies that they can't achieve the same level of uh, uh, success in the workplace because they have to stop and have a baby. The, the male doesn't have to do that. That's not fair. So women need abortion to be equal with men. There, are, there is a significant uh, swath of the American pro-choice public that actually believes that, that that's the only reason pro-lifers want to end abortion is to control women and that the only way women can be equal is to have abortion. I mean, the, the, they, they're so entrenched in that ideology that they're fully convinced it's true. Ideology is a hell of a drug. It's a hell of a drug. And through language, the manipulation of language, right, or what we call propaganda, right, you can actually begin to make sizable differences and shifts in the way that the culture thinks about that given topic in question.